Hey, so this is a quick video about uh, a POC that I did a proof of concept of a Arduino model railroad uh, controller. And so this is a Arduino Mega. Uh, you see all the wires are connected to. This is the main processor, uh, if you're familiar with Arduino. Here's a uh, steady 12 volt DC power supply um, that will power some of the uh, relays and stuff that I have that control some of the other devices. The Arduino itself is uh, powered by a my barrel jack uh, adapter. Uh, I think it's seven seven volts maybe. Um, and then there's a USB cable that we use to uh, compile code and uh, to the board. And so kind of to start, um, what we have is turn this on. We have a couple of these sonar sensors. And if you see, there's you know uh, essentially there's an emitter and a receiver. So maybe a speaker and a microphone. And this is kind of the unit. Uh, starting up, and so what happens is, you know, say you have a train uh, approaching from from the uh, the west, it covers up the speaker, which activates the gates and the, and the uh, the lights, and then there's a second sensor which will be placed on the other side of the track, gets covered, and as soon as the train uncovers it, so say the end of the train, it then changes the uh, lights as well, and then stops the uh, gates from firing, and so I'll kind of focus on that. Um, the signal bridge. So again, if the train was coming from from the east, you, know, you see that those lights change right away. Gates start um, activating, and then again, I cover up that exit. It, it resets, and, and so those are two sensors. It essentially monitors one track. They'll be uh, mounted underneath the the track, pointing up. They have a, a variable distance sensor that you can. Um, you know, you could say only monitor up to seven centimeters or seven inches or, or so forth uh, for accuracy, and they actually work really well. And so I, I initially had some voltage detectors just to uh, detect when there was a voltage drop on the current uh, on the on the track to detect if there was a train coming. Um, I didn't like that because only the engine was being detected and uh, because all the rolling stock was was unpowered. Then I had like a, a light sensor. Um, I didn't like that as well because of the amount of light you had to have in the room by default for it to work. So these sonar sensors have worked the best. Um, and so a little more deeper dive. So this is a, a relay right here. And so that controls the sound unit. Uh, this is a board called HQ300, which is a modern crossing gate sound that connects to this 8 ohm speaker. And so we use it in a relay because this board requires 12 volts uh, DC. So it's higher voltage than the Arduino can output. And so it's actually taking the 12 volt DC into the relay and then the relay is controlled by the Arduino Mega. Um, it's a five volt low active. That means that with five volts, the uh, Arduino can open and close the relay, uh, which is then taken to 12 volts to uh, this unit, which is in loop mode. There's a, a pin across the two center pins here that makes it loop. Um, let me stop this. And then so the crossing gates, um, I had two, but I actually broke one. So these are NJI uh, crossing gates. And so there's actually a servo mounted underneath there. Um, if you can see it, I'll uh, see how that works. Very simple. It's um, a wire that pushes the gate up and down. The lights are all common uh, anode, uh, and so they're wired to the um, mega. And they turn on with low. Stop that again. And then you also notice this um, board blinking right here. This is a Bluetooth um, board from uh, Blue Fruit. Or it's a blue fruit board from maybe Adafruit or I forget what, what the make is. It's relatively inexpensive, and so I'll show you a phone app that we built or that I built to uh, control that. And then the, the last piece over here is I have a just a turnout with a dwarf connected to a, a tortoise slow motion switch, and that's connected to a double relay, which controls the direction of the motor. It's a DC motor, so reversing the polarity of the motor reverses the direction of the, the of the tortoise. And so again, that tortoise requires higher voltage than the um, Arduino itself can output. So it's connected to a relay, which is connected to 12 volts. So I'll shut off the uh, gates. And so I'm going to turn on my phone here. So I'm entering my passcode. And so then I'll go to this app that I built that I'm calling Train Controller. And you'll see that a little blue light now is on on the Bluetooth um, controller. So I'll kind of zoom back out here. So if I hit this button right here, gates turn on. Button here, gates turn off. 
So it's using hardware serial uh, Bluetooth to the Arduino, which is a super simple way of transferring data. And then I have different facets within this app that control the lights. So say I want to test the lights, I have a button that will help me debug light situations um, because there's a lot of solder joints. And then I have the turnout at the end, which controls the turnout. And so I'll show you that. Um, so I'll wait till I have these on the timer. So see there it's moving the uh, slow motion turnout and you can see the relay kind of snapping back and forth um, and so the way I controlled it is you can have power going to the slow motion switch the whole time but I only want it uh, powered uh, for kind of short duration why it's why it's moving or animating and so um, you'll see it kind of snap off after a few seconds after so I'm kind of zoom in over there at the tortoise See it moving and that controls that turnout so everything here is temporary because this is just uh, to prove out this method so nothing is nailed down or anything um, i trying to think if there's anything else to talk about the um, the signal bridge itself was not hard to hook up but you see there's tons of solder uh, connections and hot glue over the solder just to insulate them um, but you know six lights four wires of light, I would say, uh, three plus the common. So all those had to be soldered, so that took a while. And then this main breadboard, which is just handling, handling uh, power and, and ground to the various components, so that will be all cleaned up in a, a final version. And then uh, I'm using some of these uh, servo cables uh, for some of the LEDs just to make the connections um, uh, easier to break apart when I move things, and yeah. So yeah, that's kind of the setup. And then, so here's some of the trains that I'm going to be running on the uh, on the POC. So these are all MT8 except for the Metro and the uh, Amtrak. Those are Kato, um, ProSound 3, all HO. And then, so I have uh, Dash 9s, uh, ES44 ACs, and some of the SD70 uh, Aces there, and then. This lower shelf, I have um, another Metra with some more cars, kind of N scale, HO scale, and O scale. Um, I used to run O scale there, and then down there I just have some random uh, rolling stock and um, yeah.